Today on Hack 5, I'm 3D printing a shark. Rawr! That's the sound a shark makes. Rawr! This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com, Crash Plan, and GoToAssist. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of Technolust. And I'm so excited about my segment. Yes, you're <laughs> making, It's working! You're making a shark. I'm making a shark. That's Sharknado! Oh no! And it's not even Shark Week on Discovery. But it is Sharknado on Sci-Fi. What's Ooh, Sharknado? It's like a tornado with a shark. You know I don't watch yeah. TV. I mean, I have no well, idea. It's a sci-fi movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whatever you kids are doing these days. It's amazing. You have to see it. Cool. So what are you up to th these days? I um, see you're on crutches and you're home from Hack Across America. <laughs> I'm, on a, I'm on a little bit of a layover. Okay. Uh, Hack Across America getting everything ready for DEF CON. Um, yes. And so we're going to be like killing it in Vegas. Uh, if you're in the Vegas area for DEF CON, whether you're going to the conference or not, we will be celebrating, get this, our eight year anniversary. Wow. Yeah. So are we going to have a party? We should do something 8-bit. I don't I know. agree. That would yes. be so fun. So I, all I can say Where is your stay ties. on the Google Pluses and the Twitters and those mm. things so that we can let you know when the things are happening. But otherwise, I'm not really uh, sure exactly what we're going to do yet as far as the celebrations are concerned. But uh, we will drink all the booze and hack all the things. We'll drink things. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, I uh, oh remember? Did you see the episode that aired last week? Or I guess it was the one before. The so last week is Rhino skateboard? Motors, but yes, yes, the electric skateboard. Dude, I rode that thing. It's fun. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. Yeah, I was riding it like in a cute little skirt, and I was going to town like in my backyard. It was so much fun. There's video of this somewhere. <laughs> Listen, uh, it's a lot of fun. I highly encourage anybody that has skated or not to, tr to if they ever have the opportunity to try such a thing. But keep in mind that there's two modes. There's low. <laughs> Which I think it caps out at like 15, yeah. and then there's high, which goes to I like 25. I stayed in low 25. the whole time, because I, I haven't skateboarded since I was in high school. Well, it turns out, in between low and high, there's what I like to call the wiggle zone. And yeah, you don't want to go there. And I went there, and <laughs> I, I ate it. So I'm quite gimpy now, Aww. and I'm having a, I, I hope, in about he a week. You pulled a Darren. I pulled basically. a Darren. <laughs> and you know, somebody mentioned this on Twitter, that I am not allowed to use power tools and I guess powered skateboards <laughs> count as that count. <laughs> so it's okay Darren <laughs> yeah but I'm thinking about putting some um, you know some some roller skate wheels on this and oh, a couple God. of motors you and, know you what know, just electric don't, crutches don't hack all the things okay just keep maybe, the maybe just some LEDs okay LEDs is fine uber tooth or something hack fire. RF yeah <laughs> really this is a really good uh, make a great Yagi <laughs> antenna you know like, I just look like a gimpy person, but actually I'm hacking you. Ah! <laughs> and that just became a gif. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so, so stay tuned. Let's get right into it. And, uh, and stay tuned for this, because I'm looking forward to getting our, our sharky ABS goodness on. Mm. So, Bill, let's see we've got this shot lined up here on this TV set. I'm just shooting this with... What are we shooting with here? We are actually taking the stream uh, right from uh, this uh, camera here, SDI out of this professional camera into our Avenir Mini. This is the uh, latest version of our Avenir series, which is smaller, faster, more capable. And we're ingesting, uh, I believe about uh, SDI to about four megabits through four different cards. One card being AT&T, 3G, one being AT&T 4G, LTE, uh, T-Mobile card, and also a Verizon LTE card. So, so let's step back. You're saying that the video signal coming out of the camera over there is coming into... We're adjusting HDSCI, HDSCI, HDSCI correct. Right? Okay, so we've got an HD feed coming into this box, but this isn't just going straight over to the TV set over here. Rather, we're streaming online. That is correct. We're, oh, actually, yeah. we're actually using a combination of technologies. 3G, 4G bonding, and a Wi-Fi connection. So the beauty of this is when you're broadcasting abroad and you have uh, various technologies at your disposal, this will actually utilize all the available broadcast uh, technologies, allowing you to have more reliable broadcasts, more bandwidth uh, for your broadcasts, and obviously overlapping uh, networks uh, so you're peering uh, and not uh, not um, just relying on one relying source. on one source, right. right? All right. Well, show me the device. How does this how does this guy work? 
So as we talked about earlier, this is taking an SD feed in right from this professional grade camera here, SDIN. You also have the capability to do HDMI in should you have a prosumer or consumer brand camera. This is being encoded through our uh, device here called the Avenir Mini into our proprietary codec, ACTL3. And so how does ACTL3 differ from like industry standard codecs like H.264? Good question. Uh, H.264 is a fine codec, but what we spent uh, time developing is a codec that uh, was designed for broadcasters specifically, uh, offering you more uh, variables over the broadcast, uh, color uh, accuracy, and uh, we just found that if we took the best parts of H.264 and did uh, our own proprietary codec, including our own technology, that we just had a more robust, uh, more professional grade uh, codec for broadcasters. All right, and so how does this take the, the multiple sources in and put it into such a way that you can actually use this, um, uh, you know, use any one single stream? Is it, is it load balancing? Is it... It is load balanced. Uh, we, call it, um, we call it multiplexing, and we're essentially using a protocol that we developed called LDMP, Low Delay Multipath Technology. And what that does is, uh, I won't speak about it too much because it's proprietary, but it allows us to bond uh, 3G and 4G carriers and to utilize that entire uh, scope of bandwidth to multiplex, meaning that we're not relying on any one stream at any given time, but actually utilizing all four of those streams to maximize the bandwidth and reliability. So, and so this uh, takes advantage of more than just 3G and 4G modems though, I see we've got other ports here. What That's does this true. allow us to do as far as connectivity? The beauty of this solution here is we multiplex not only 3G and 4G, but also Wi-Fi. We've got a Wi-Fi bud here, so if you're traveling abroad and you have 3G and 4G coverage, or if you want to work out of a van that has a mobile a hotspot connection already included, uh, you can simply just put this in Wi-Fi mode and utilize Wi-Fi bandwidth. You're not dependent upon any one uh, technology. Also, if you're indoors and you are very limited to your bandwidth or to uh, 3G or 4G coverage, you can plug this into your local LAN like we have here and utilize all your local LAN bandwidth as well. Like example, we have all cars connected and there is um, also VSAT connected. But latency on VSAT is 700 milliseconds. So it's not going on VSAT, it's going over 3G cars and LT cars because it's so fast. So as soon as we lose any uh, LTA cards, it will switch to satellite because there is no connection anymore. And I won't have to think about right, that. Right, exactly. It it, it's, it's all automatically, yeah. yeah. And uh, it will sense latency, it will sense how much bandwidth you have, mm -hmm. and will simultaneously send to all cards. And if suddenly cards disappear, it will resend packet to another card. That's cool. What's the challenges in getting multiple WANs to all speak together? Is this a Linux box with IP yeah, tables? Right, or right. What's well, in, inside? Mm -hmm. Yeah, initially we have started with uh, Windows and Mac OS system, but we found that it does not offer you that flexibility of Linux. So we did port all our software on Linux, so inside there is Linux, and uh, it's, it's, it does that on very low level. It's not using routing. It sends packets directly to interface, and so this way we could uh, dynamically sense interface up or down. Does packet arrive or not? Because mm -hmm. so. you have something on the other end that's reporting back. You've got right, a carrier, right, right. A, a, a control signal that just says, like, pain, here's, what's, right. here's what it's looking like from each of my carriers. So basically, basically, we know on each interface how many packets we're receiving back and what is latency for each packet. Mm -hmm. Because in broadcast, what you're going for, as opposed to, you know, like like me as a podcaster, I don't care if there's a 10 second delay. What right. I want is, a, you know, an HD feed. But in broadcast, if you're doing an interview, you really need like what two seconds. Two seconds less? latency, two right? Seconds. So, and that's the beauty of the protocol is that we guarantee two second latency. If if some network cannot deliver two second latency, we don't use it anymore. It goes out of path. Okay. So it's always, always that low delay. And so what if none of the networks will offer you two-second latency? Do you just not deliver the stream or do you... Uh, so, yeah, that's a good question. What happens is it's still trying to send audio, but video free frame will freeze. Oh, so you just yeah. start dropping video frames. Correct, yeah. And as soon as bandwidth is up, it will recover. It just picks right. right back up? Right, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Is there diminishing returns when it comes to the 
uh, the, the how much frames you buffer and, and what kind of latency you're willing to accept? Uh, or is it just the more the better? Uh, yeah, more the better to a degree. What happens sometimes, all networks going down. If you have the 20 seconds buffer, you can actually fire something else, like MiFi spot, and it will pick up right away without any restart or anything. It will switch to MiFi and stream still goes. And oh, you have okay. that 20 seconds buffer, it still plays back. So you're saying within the 20 seconds, if suddenly this starts hiccuping on one of the modems, you have that amount of time to pick up on another modem. Right, right. Is the engineer, or not right. even engineer, because this does all of that in the box. Right. It right. gives it the time it needs to... to Connect to a different network, yes. Yeah. yeah. And you're controlling so, all right, of this right. interface over the iPad? Yeah, you can, uh, there is interface here on LCD. Mm -hmm. Also iPad, iPhone, any Android device, doesn't matter. Because it's just a web interface. It's Wi-Fi, yeah, web interface. So you can, so this has its own Wi-Fi hotspot, that you connect to it, and then you can control it through your browser? Correct. There are two Wi-Fi uh, wi -Fi cards actually inside. One is using for control, another with high gain antennas to stream. Oh, I see. So is that what these are, or are these for the 4G? No, uh, this is additional. So uh, unit itself, you see these uh, ray domes? Okay. That's where the antennas are, and there is one on the back side. So these are for the 3G and 4G antennas? Each modem has two antenna connectors, because it's industrial-grade uh, embedded modems. I see, and so it does kind of like a uh, beam forming, where it decides right, which, right, which right. antenna is best. Right, it's not beam forming per se technology, but it Picks, picks up signal, you know, on different antennas. And so do, do the, are these antennas made for any particular, because uh, right, frequency, because, right. uh, you know, mm -hmm. like AT&T is going to have a different, you know, what are they on, like 850, 900, right. or 1700, mm -hmm. 2150, mm -hmm. 2500, there's so many different frequencies. Frequencies, right. Are these antennas going to be able to handle all of those different ones? Uh, dip, uh, yeah, on uh, Verizon, uh, it's kind of a little simpler. It's L mostly LTE on AT&T. It's low frequency on uh, LTE and high frequency on 3G. So these antennas will uh, specifically optimize for LTE. They will still pick up signal and work on 3G, but it's not as strong. That's why external antenna provides much better flexibility because it's much wider range of cool. frequencies. And also international, it helps. Sometimes in different countries, it's so different. So you always want to have that option of external antenna. Nice. So you could connect it. Yeah. Well, let's see, uh, let's see it do some satellite action. OK. Sure. We'll set up the BGAN and uh, um, give that a try here. .NETs are globally known, one of the most popular top-level domains, and they instantly inject credibility. So if you already have a .com, protect your brand with a .NET. And if you don't want to register an insanely long .com, you can go ahead and get that .NET for just $8.99 a year over at domain.com. But get this, we have the hookup. The guys over at domain.com, they love Hack5, they love you guys, so they want to get you 15% off their already affordable domain names and web hosting. So all you have to do is use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout. That's what Shannon and I do. It did with hackacrossamerica.net and darrenkitchen.net, and you can too. So just go over to domain.com. That's 15% off and big time savings. So don't forget to use the coupon code HAK5. Thanks again for domain.com for sponsoring Hack5, Hack Across America. And when you think domain names, think domain.com. Last week's trivia question was, as of April 2012, what 3D printer was the most funded technology project on Kickstarter of all the things? And the answer was PrinterBot. Now this week's question is, what Wi-Fi network scanning program was created by MetaGeek LLC as an alternative to NetStumbler? You can answer that over at hack5.org trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack5 goodies.